I have been growing a reasonably wide range of different types of vegetables in the gardens that I manage. And with all of them, the methods that I use and my understanding of what the individual crops need can definitely be improved. This is part of the struggle of growing vegetables and part of the joy and interest as well, as there's always so much more to learn. But I've struggled with some vegetables more than others, never feeling that they've been successful enough. Some I've given up on and others I've continued to grow, uh, but as a secondary crop, not growing too much of it, but hoping to harvest enough to make it worthwhile and perhaps eventually figure out what I could do to improve things. This is what happened with aubergines or eggplants that I have been trying to grow in the shelter of the polytunnel without much success. But this year I made a few changes, including a radical change in how I grow these aubergine plants, and I had a much more successful crop. Aubergine plants are heat-loving plants, and really would not do well at all in the maritime climate that we have here in Ireland. And I've grown them in the warmer and more sheltered microclimate of the polytunnels for quite a few years. But I have been disappointed with how little they have produced, only getting a few of the purple fruit late in the season. They seem to be more of a novelty crop, producing a bit of a treat later in the season. Because of this, I didn't want to give them too much space, and tended to only grow them in the side beds up against the polytunnel plastic, after a spring or early summer crop had been harvested. I had been following the general advice from several books about planting them reasonably far apart to allow air movement between the plants and to grow them as a bush with multiple stems which generally needed to be tied back. The plants always seemed to develop a lot of mold on their leaves and a lot of the flowers decayed instead of producing fruit and some of the fruit also rotted. I had started to prune out some of the lower leaves of the plants to allow more air circulation hoping that this would improve things. But I figured there was probably other things that I could do to get a better crop, but I hadn't really put in the effort to research or explore other options until this year. The main thing that I did differently this season was to grow the aubergine plants as a single stem, climbing up a length of twine hung from the polytunnel structure. This is very similar to how I've been growing tomatoes for many years, pruning out all the side shoots to prevent the plant becoming bushier, and this comparison makes sense as the aubergine and tomato plants are closely related. I got the idea of growing the plants this way from several sources, including seeing these aubergine trees in the background of one of Charles Dowding's videos, and it made a lot of sense to me. So this year I decided to dedicate one of the central beds in my polytunnel to a large crop of aubergine plants, in which I transplanted a double row of plants at a spacing of about 50 centimeters or 20 inches each way. This higher density meant more plants, which could have led to more overshadowing, but I pruned off all the side shoots and a lot of the lower leaves as the plants grew to allow for much more air circulation. As the plants grew, I used a combination of winding the main stem around the twine and attaching clips to support the plants, which grew a lot taller than I had expected. By the end of the season, most of the plants were taller than I am, almost reaching the top of the polytunnel space, and with the lower leaves pruned off, the bed of plants looked like two long rows of trees, with lots of space underneath. And there was very little mold on the leaves, even though I kept growing some of them in the space until well into November, whereas in previous years the plants tended to really suffer by September. So this new method of growing the plants as heavily pruned trees definitely seemed to work well, but the yields of some of the plants were still quite low. I have been growing one variety of aubergines called Black Beauty, which seems to be one of the main varieties available around here. A few years ago I tried a few other varieties, but was not impressed with any of them as they all seemed to have the same issues as the one I had been growing. But this year I decided to try another hybrid variety, as I've had success with hybrid varieties of other types of vegetables, and I bought a packet of Falcon F1 seeds, which were considerably more expensive than the open pollinating variety that I had been growing. I was quite impressed with how much better the F1 hybrid variety did than the open pollinated variety I also grew in the same bed of the polytunnel. The hybrid variety produced double the number of aubergines per plant and double the weight, which produced a yield of about 6 kilograms per square meter compared to the 2.9 kilograms per square meter of the open pollinated variety. The lower yield of about 3 kilograms per square meter is similar to what I had been getting in previous years, and I would be hesitant to give a crop like this too much of the valuable space in the polytunnel, but the higher yield of 6 kilograms per square meter is above the minimum yield that I would be looking for from most of the crops in this protected microclimate. And the fruit from the hybrid variety were definitely more uniform, which is what I would have expected from the F1 variety. 
It was great to be able to finally get a decent yield out of this crop that had been so disappointing in the past, to change to a method that seemed to work much better for me, but I suspect that the yield could be a lot better. Although the growing conditions were quite good this year, some of the plants were not transplanted into the ground until well into the summer and would not have been able to take a full advantage of the warmer part of the growing season. In the planting plans that I have made for this year, I had the aubergines being transplanted into the space after the overwintering onions and garlic had been harvested, and I staggered the sowing times with this in mind. This meant that the first batch of the open pollinated variety were sown at the end of February, potted up a few times, and transplanted into the final growing position in the middle of May. And the hybrid variety were sown in the second week of April, and most of them were transplanted into the bed after the middle of June. But I had decided to keep some of the garlic crop in the ground for a few weeks longer to produce bigger cloves for planting next year. So I decided to pot up about a third of the hybrid aubergine plants into larger grow bags for another three to four weeks before they were finally transplanted into the soil. This of course set the plants back quite a bit and they were never as strong or as productive as the plants that were transplanted earlier. So even though the open pollinated variety were sown earlier and in the ground earlier, they still produce quite a bit less than the hybrid variety. If this F1 variety had been given the same head start in the season, I could expect that it would have produced much better, but that's not necessarily the case. The earlier batch of aubergine plants were badly hit by aphids, which seemed to set back the plants quite a bit. I suspect I didn't treat these transplants as well as I could have, and the aphids thrived on the stress plants. I usually rely on the ladybirds coming to the rescue and clearing off the aphids, but it seems that one of the local species of birds were eating the ladybirds, so the aphid pressure on these plants was quite bad for a few weeks in the beginning of the summer. I don't know how much this would have affected the yield from these plants later in the season, but it is possible that the hybrid plants would have been just as affected if they had been in the ground earlier in the season and would not necessarily have ended up being more productive but I definitely want to change the planting plants for this protected growing space so that the cool season spring crops are cleared out of the bed by the end of April so that all of the aubergine plants can get into the ground early next year. I'm also planning to sow the aubergine seeds earlier, perhaps at the beginning of February, so that the plants can take much better advantage of the warmth of the summer. The other factor that may be limiting the yield of these plants is the lack of adequate pollination of the flowers. I have noticed a few of the flowers rotting rather than producing fruit, and with local pollinators often distracted by other flowers in the gardens and surrounding landscape, it is a task that I should look at taking on myself. I have learned to regularly step in to hand pollinate courgette plants, but I have not done the same with aubergine flowers, but apparently a bit of regular hand pollination can help to ensure that there is a very regular crop being produced on these plants. I wonder if the hybrid variety has flowers that could be more likely to be self-pollinated or pollinated by the gentle shaking of the plant and the older variety needing more active intervention by bumblebees or other pollinators. And this could explain a lot of the difference in the yield between the varieties, but I just don't know. And it would be good to explore the possible productivity of both varieties if the flowers were regularly pollinated. But this of course would add yet another task to the already busy days in the gardens during the summer. So this crop of aubergine plants managed as tall single stemmed plants and with the increased productivity of the hybrid variety has shown me that aubergines can be a major crop in the polytunnel and I should give the crop a lot more space and attention next year. It is still lower yielding than the tomato plants and other warm season fruiting plants that I grow in the polytunnels, but it produces enough of a high value and desirable crop that it makes it worthwhile, especially as I'm only beginning to really figure out how to grow them well. Planting them earlier will help, and better fertility management and care for the young plants is essential, and I hope to be able to manage the aphids next year a lot better. I also think that the plants could be spaced a bit closer together, as there is a lot more room between the plants than I had thought there would be, but I don't want them to become too crowded. There is also the option of allowing one or more of the side shoots to develop, as I've seen other people grow these plants with two, three, or even four main shoots. This will likely prevent the plants from growing too tall, and each plant will need more space, but there will be fewer expensive seeds to buy and fewer pots of plants to look after in the spring. And it will be interesting to find out what number of stems on each plant will work best in my context, though I quite like the simplicity and ease of managing only one stem per plant. 
And now that I've got a better grasp on how to grow these plants well, I'd like to explore growing a few other varieties again to see which ones would work well in my context. It might be worth setting aside one of the full beds in the new large polytunnel that we just put up to do a decent variety trial of aubergines next year and to explore a few different spacing and pruning options to see how different they will be. This of course would add a significant amount of work, especially if I'm going to be regularly hand pollinating all the flowers. But this season has shown me that it might be worth it for what I no longer consider to be a marginal crop. <laughs>